Okay, fine. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Maybe I'll give a quick introduction about myself again. I have uh, around 10 years of SAP experience in two modules like uh, ABAP, uh, then HANA, and uh, recently uh, SAC. Okay, SAC, I have done both BI and planning. So uh, that's where I work for an MNC in Bangalore. So uh, even I'm still learning, you can say. And teaching is my passion. So uh, let's see uh, how it goes about. I'll quickly give an introduction about SAC. Uh, like we all know, it's a uh, visualization tool to do data analytics. Okay, it's an SAP tool, and uh, uh, it's it sits on top of a backend system. So you all, all these SAP people will definitely know what a backend system is. Mainly, it, it's 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 mostly an SAP backend. Okay, uh, the system could be an ECC, uh, which is Enterprise Central Component SAP's main system on RT platform or on a data, which ECC is a transaction system. And uh, backend can also be an analytical system uh, like BW or HANA, et cetera. And uh, it, uh, it can, again, uh, pick data from various other uh, systems as well. So in short, it's a data analyt analytics tool on cloud. Uh, with all these, uh, which which can sit on top of all these backend system, or in simple language, it can pick data from um, all these backend systems. Okay, and then uh, we can visualize data. And that's what I say, SAC do. Uh, like I told, uh, I think uh, for you, uh, should I be explaining cloud, etc.? I think it will be a, uh, it will be good if I can maybe spend a minute to explain what is cloud and on on prem or and what is on-premise. Many of you might already know, but just in case anyone was not familiar, cloud is like, uh, it's all about where we store the data, okay? So before it used to be on-premise, a company uh, can st store their data within their facility, or within their infrastructure. Like a, they might have a storage area network. Uh, you might have seen these all these uh, like server rooms, etc. So they can uh, store their data in their own system, their own uh, infrastructure that's when we call it on premise or now uh, from with cloud what we can do is we can uh, uh, give our data okay hand over our data to a cloud service provider so cloud service provider we all know like amazon web service uh, google cloud platform microsoft azure all these are cloud service providers so a company can give uh, uh, data to this cloud service provider and then they can subscribe on a monthly rental on a or on a usage basis, etc. Okay, so there are a lot of advantages with cloud. Unlike uh, there is no capital expenditure, a com company doesn't have to invest in a server or a server room, etc. So most of the companies are now going for uh, cloud storage. So these cloud service provider, uh, all these uh, Amazon, Microsoft, Azure. So what they do is they have. Uh, thousands of customers who has handed over their data and uh, they will and they will let them subscribe it okay so there are maybe you can note down whatever points you find interesting there are three types of cloud uh, public private and hybrid okay uh, this and there are three types of cloud offering uh, like uh, iwas that is infrastructure as a service and then platform as a service and uh, uh, software as a service. Okay. So this SAC is a software as a service application. Uh, means it is developed and maintained by SAP. So it sits, uh, it sits on SAP's cloud. Okay. So it's, it doesn't belong to a cloud service provider, but SAP is the owner of the application. So whenever a customer uses it, uh, they have to subscribe it from SAC. Okay, or subscribe on a monthly rental or or whatever. Okay, so the application is owned by SAC. A customer on a subscribes on a monthly basis. Okay, it's a visualization tool. Okay, uh, did anyone hear about Power BI? Did anyone know what is Power BI? Uh, I have heard, heard but not used. But Power BI is something like an tool for reporting. Oh, correct. Yeah, Power BI, good. Yeah, Power BI is also a, even that's a reporting tool. Okay, it uh, will. It's a Microsoft reporting tool. Just a minute, hold on.
Yeah, uh, sorry about that. Uh, so I was telling you, yeah, Power BI uh, is a Microsoft re reporting tool. Uh, those days it was called a reporting tool. Now it's more of a visualization tool. Okay, a reporting tool, uh, we can say it's more of an Excel sheet format, which has columns, rows and columns format, but a visualization tool will have more uh, charts, tables, and it's more uh, self in, uh, self service, call it self service. Okay. It's a self-service tool. So uh, Power BI is a Microsoft product. So many when it was released, maybe I think it's around 2015 or 16. Many SAP customers uh, started using Power BI. So then SAP released SAC to kind of catch up with Power BI. So now it's uh, many of uh, the customers are going back to an SAP tool like SAC. Okay. Uh, so. That's a brief introduction. Okay, uh, never mind. Even if you have not understood it completely, but uh, just understand it's a data analysis tool. Uh, SAP on SAP's cloud. Okay, SAP data an analysis tool on SAP's cloud. I can quickly maybe show the system. Uh, that will be helpful. So what we typically do is in uh, SAC, uh, we pick data from the backend, like I told. Backend can be any of the SAP or non even non non SAP systems. We pick data from the backend. We create model, and then we create story. Okay, story is our output. When customers uses it, we call it dashboard. Okay, story or dashboard. So as, as an SAP as an SAC consultant, what we typically do is we uh, we pick data from the backend, we create model, then we create story. Okay, that will be this is what you will be doing once you let's say if you get an SAC job, uh, this is what you will be doing uh, mostly. Okay, and uh, before I go to the system, I think I'll uh, maybe another couple of uh, points I, I I wanted to note. Uh, whatever, uh, yeah, SAC. Please note this down. SAC has four main components. We can say components or functionality. Uh, the most basic one is SAC BI, which is um, Business intelligence. Okay. Uh, next is SAC planning. And did anyone hear about planning? Does anyone know BPC or IP? SAP people might know. Nobody? Okay, no mind. Uh, planning is another uh, system. The SAP has a BPC system uh, used for planning, uh, which the companies can use to uh, plan their business. Okay. And then there is uh, third one is SAC predictive analytics, okay. uh, which is used to uh, do all these data science predictive algorithms, you know, right? All these data science AI concepts. So that is a third component, SAC predictive analytics. And fourth component is uh, uh, application designer. Application designer is nothing but it's like a uh, whatever functionality we're not able to achieve using a story. Uh, whenever the scenario is complex, we go for application designer. Okay, so SAC has these uh, four components, and there are another four sub components. Maybe you can quickly note down, which is uh, digital boardroom, SAC digital boardroom, mobile application, uh, a, uh, analytical catalog, and analytical hub. So altogether, eight components, four main components, and four sub components. Okay. Uh, okay, now I think I can maybe show you a, an example of what we typically do using an SAC system. Okay, I will share my screen. Uh, able to see. Please. Yeah, you can see. Okay, fine. Uh, this is a this is, this is a cloud like I told. It's a cloud application, so we are able to log in using this URL. Okay, so all we need is this URL and the username and password. Uh, then we'll be on this home screen. Typically, if it's an on-premise system, we will have to install the application, uh, install, etc. I this uh, development kit or whatever. But it's since it's a uh, SAC URL, uh, all we need to do is using this Thanks. So we are in the home page. Okay. Uh, home page has a lot of options. Typically, this left panel. Uh, we have these files. Uh, this is where we create our all our objects. Okay, whatever objects uh, we do, we create under file. I told you uh, most of the time we'll be creating uh, either model 
or a story. These two are the basic functionalities, model and story. Okay, so we have that options and there are many other things which we can do. Um, most of them belongs to SAC planning functionality, which is again, uh, right now we in the industry, we have these BI jobs, okay, at least in Bangalore, I'm sure across uh, all location in India, there are SAC BI jobs. You're not expected to have planning experience, uh, okay, uh, but uh, over a period of time, maybe after one or two years, uh, it's good to have planning experience as well, okay. Companies might expect planning knowledge as well. But at this moment, uh, we, do, we do have SSE BI, uh, BI jobs, okay. Uh, so SSE BI uh, is not very complex. Uh, I, I'm sure all of you can pick up in maybe 10 to 15 hours. Okay. That's all we do. To get an understanding, we can usually pick up in 10 to 15 hours. Another 10 hours or so, you will be expert, okay. Because it's not a, it's very lightweight tool. All what we do is we just pick up data and analyze it, okay, that's all, that's all we do. I will do an example before that, maybe I can quickly go to all these function. All these are different uh, functionalities which uh, we need not uh, go now. And uh, there are a couple of other concepts which uh, it's good. SAP people will definitely know what is transport. Okay, we will transport, we'll, we usually uh, do develop application on a a development system, then we transport to quality and production system. Then there is another important point here to note, to note here is the version, okay? System version, uh, which is like, we can say 2023.8. This is a sandbox system, okay? This is a trial system. Uh, so it's a non-production system. So uh, like I told, this is system owner is SAP, okay? They maintain the version, okay? So we, I have no say, we, don't, we can't upgrade or update or something. All we just use whatever SAP provides us. So what SAP provides at the, today is uh, the version today is 2023.8. That is because we are in the eight bi-weekly of the year, 2023. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a non-production system and all non-production systems are updated on a bi-weekly basis. That is every two weeks, they will be updating to the next version. Now we are in April. April 2nd bi-weekly, okay? That's why we have, we are at 0.8, okay? Fourth month, second bi-weekly, uh, that's why 2023.8, okay? Just for your information. Okay, uh, that is a very high level overview. There are other functionalities here as well. Uh, we did not worry about it now. All I wanted to do right now maybe is, I'll create a model and story. Okay, so we go to plus button. Model. Okay, there are different options to uh, pick data. Okay, for to create, for us to create model, we need data. So there are different options like uh, this is creating from the blank. We have to input data. This is from an Excel, Excel sheet, and to pick the data from an Excel sheet. And then uh, there are two connections. Okay, two very important, two good to know. Like there are two way, uh, two methods by which we can pick data from the backend. One is live connection, another is import connection. Okay, we will uh, study about it in detail once we start the classes. Uh, but for now, uh, this, since this is a trial system, there is no backend uh, backend data available. We have to pick from a uh, Excel sheet, so CSV file. So let me try to pick data from an Excel sheet. Is everyone following, or am I going fast, or? Please comment. Whoever doesn't understand, please comment. I don't mind. I want it to be. There's no point with me explaining without you understanding. So I want to make sure everyone understands it. Uh, yes, Nijesh, everything goes. It's fine. Everyone, anyone under, doesn't understand, please stop me. I'll be happy if you can stop me and I'm happy to explain again. Okay. I'm hoping everyone is fine. Okay, uh, so we have picked this file, okay, on this Excel file, and we have an option like use first row as column header. We untick. So what we say, what it says is like whatever first row we have in the Excel is the heading of that column. Okay, then I import. Okay, uh, before we proceed, I just want to show the data, the structure of the data what we have. So this is nothing but a sales data, SNC for sales and customer. 
so uh, it is like uh, sales data let's say of a manufacturing company okay so typically company details etc uh, so before we proceed another important point is uh, data can be of two types whenever it's about data analysis uh, we have two types of data master data and transaction data sap people again might know master data is nothing but uh, whenever the, our our output is a report okay like i explained our output is a report so we are creating a report our ultimate aim is to see the transaction data in a report okay see that look at the transaction data then we reach inside we, what we get is insight from the dashboard or stories dashboard or story is our output so we will be looking at dashboard or story to see the transaction data and gain insight and for a uh, business user okay who uses this, uses this in a company uh, their idea is to uh, look at the insight and then take the next business decision so that is the purpose okay when to and this transaction we have two types of data that's what i want you to understand master data and transaction data so whatever we are looking at uh, uh, when we look at the story we are looking at the transaction data but that's not enough okay we also need master data to uh, to give meaning to transaction data so if i give a simple example i'm sure all of you have a bank account so you might have downloaded a bank statement so why do we download and look at the bank statement we are looking at Uh, to see either the our balance or a transaction amount that is our purpose okay but uh, is that all we were having there uh, in the statement we also have uh, like uh, account number date uh, uh, like name etc okay in the bank in the bank statement the transaction number everything but our main idea is to see the balance or the transaction amount so is it enough only if the statement has only Uh, this transaction amount and the balance or that that doesn't make any sense right for that for that values to have a meaning we need master data like uh, the account number or a name or a date etc all these are master data so it's very important to understand the difference between master data and transaction data okay uh, so in sap in sap we have different name maybe you all can note it down uh, there are different names for master data so we say dimension is one master data dimension attribute and characteristics all these four are more or less the same meaning okay. and transaction data has a uh, key figure key has in key chain so key figure and in sac we call it measure okay so transaction data key figure and measure all three has the same meaning okay so very important to know so what we have done here is we have uploaded this file okay so if you look at this file first column is sbu second column is bu so we have the same data here sbu bu sub bu okay so if you have noted this is an indicator this cross like icon means it's a master data okay all these are master data transaction data most of the time will be either a price or a quantity okay most of the time it will be an amount price or a quantity okay so that will be a master data if we can have a look at it for example in in this case see this one if you see this icon this is a transaction data revenue revenue that means it's an amount okay it's an amount in usd or whatever currency so that is a transaction data or we call measure so very important to understand in data analysis what is uh, in sac we call it dimension and measure okay is everyone okay till now i want response then only then i can proceed yes yeah one question about measure like uh, when we yeah. when we are segregating the data based on measure and uh, dimension like Uh, can you help me with a scenario like uh, how can we uh, no, properly segregate like this particular uh, okay. yeah def- okay good question yeah definition usually manohar is uh, whatever data that keeps changing okay that is a measure for example in this case uh, revenue re- so this is revenue right so revenue keeps changing see 
revenue can change often okay but will the bu may not this as bu means business unit so this may not this value pe may not it cannot change it's a constant okay there is a definition but it's always easy to understand from the business point of view what is the business want business want to see the revenue right a user want to want to see the revenue okay is he looking at the report to see the bu name is not okay so that's how you should understand and it's not very strictly defined also so sometimes some column we can mark it as both uh, dimension or measure for example counter or a count count of something we can it's a it's an integer number okay we can we can mark it as a dimension or we can mark it as a measure so it's all it all depends on what the user wants okay. so you, we we always have to think from the business or or users point of view okay it's not strictly defined but uh, what system has done is as soon as i uploaded this excel okay mm -hmm. from the from the name or from the whatever values it has it has automatically marked it as a dimension okay yes. how how does it know it's a dimension because it, this is an alphabet this can never be an alphabet uh, this can never be a measure okay but uh, in an in integer or a numeric can be both measure and dimension for example i'll show you some attribute or a customer id it's a easy ex example customer id uh, is any integer okay it can be an integer but it, it can never be a measure it's it's always a, it's always a master data or yeah. a dimension okay so it's always good to think from the user's point of view or a business point of view yes this is our this is actually called a transformation page okay so what we do here is a transform the data so here there are five transformation functions so this page is mainly about these functions which i will explain later but uh, overall the idea of this page is to improve the quality of the data okay we can change we can another important point is let, let's say we select so this is a customer id i selected this column it's a customer id and the data type is generic that generic means generic dimension okay so it comes under dimensions generic dimensions so we can uh, mark it as measure the system will accept if we, if i mark it as measure because it's an integer but is it from business point of view is it correct it's never correct it, we, we should never we can uh, never mark a customer id as a measure so it's always a dimension so we can change the data type and it kind of gives all the complete picture about the data so uh, two sections in this right panel so now right now we are looking at the complete model or complete data so it kind of gives a number of rows number of columns number of dimensions and number of meshes okay. and it says no issues detected in the data there is no uh, technical issues as such we are ready to create the model okay system will allow us to create the model okay. but there are some mistakes from business point of view for example uh, see this is uh, See this actual revenue. Since this is a zero, pre-sales is actually a sales number. Zero is a sales number, but this system has marked it as dimension. This actually is not a dimension, so we have to correct it. Even though the system will accept it, but it's actually a measure. So those kind of customizations we have to do. But in our example, we are assuming uh, the data is fine, uh, just to create a model and story. So time being to get the hierarchy and marking the year month. There is a column here. There is a month. There is a year. There is a year month. So I'm marking it as a date, uh, so that I'll explain why I have done this later. We'll get the hierarchy. Okay. So data quality is good. So let's go ahead and create a create a model. So it will ask me where to store the store the model. So we can we should always give a meaningful name. The sales model. So this system access, all of you can get. I think it's uh, it's a free registration. You can go to SAP website. Uh, you can uh, can get the planning uh, system access. I can share the link. You can create using your Gmail ID. So it is 
I just created a model based on this data. Okay, now we are in the model. This is called the modeler page. It will give the details of the model which we have already created. Okay, so we can go to this. It's called perspective a model structure, and uh, it will show the meshes and dimensions. Okay, there there is another concept called account based model. So all our meshes will be inside this account. So we have, I think we have around fifty five or something meshes. So all of them are in this account folder. Okay, under a, it's called account. I will explain that later. It is called account based model. So all our meshes will be answered and inside account. Otherwise, we mark one uh, year month column as a date. So that's why it's showing separately. Then we have all these generic dimensions like as BU, BU. Okay. So this is our model structure. There are a lot of other things which we can do, but uh, right now, uh, let's. Uh, this is ready to. Uh, I mean, this is ready for a story to be created. Okay, so we create story. Story is our output uh, using the data in this model. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a story. So we come back to files again. Uh, plus button. Then story. Okay, so when we create a story, it system will ask for different type. There are three types of pages. Okay. And there is another option, Smart Discovery, which is more of a data science feature. We need not go there now. So these three page types, uh, it's always best better to create a responsive page because it's it will the uh, display will adjust based on the size of the screen. As in, we can uh, see see the story in even our mobile devices, a tab or a mobile phone. So whenever that is the case, we should use the responsive page. Only then it will adjust the size of the display uh, according to the screen size. Okay, now we come to the story page. So what we mostly do is the most basic. Uh, we call it widgets. Okay, story uh, can have pages. Right now we are in page one. We can create as many pages as we want. So we will have the option to create more pages. Okay, so right now we are in page one. And uh, story will mainly have these widgets. We call it widgets. Okay. Uh, this is a chart. Okay. Then we have table. There is something called input control. There is a text element. Uh, some of you who might have all these websites are made of elements like this. Okay. Whatever website we use, so it's mostly these kind of elements. Whoever has worked on UI's uh, front end might know this, but these are usually the Widgets. Okay, there are many other types, filters, controls, which we will see it in detail later. But let's now we'll let's create a right now. Let's create a chart. Okay, chart. Most of the time we'll be using chart and table. So I selected chart. It's asking to select the data model. So I'm picking the data model which I created just now. Okay. Any questions till now? Or is everyone clear what I am trying to do? Uh, Bridges, yeah. small gap just near. Uh, yeah. What will be the system landscape for this application? Yeah, so yeah and with landscape, landscape. I think you are referring to the backend. Okay, yeah. we can have any backend, okay, any SAP backend, like for example ECC or an S4 or BW, BW HANA, Native HANA. We can pick data from any any backend system. Okay, maybe no. I can quickly show. We have an option to see. Good. Uh, now that you asked the question, we can see, go and. Yeah, my doubt is, uh, as a consultant, what uh, server e we have to log in, and uh, user what uh, server he will log. Like how it will be in ECC okay. development quality and the production okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. Typically, we. Sorry, your name. I'm talking to. My name is Aparo. Yeah, upper row. Yeah, we are typically uh, uh, we log into this URL only. Okay, whatever URL I'm looking at, SAP will. What SAP gives us is this URL to a company. Whoever is the customer, they will share the URL and credentials. So from from SAP point of view, it's the the login is only about this you this link, this web link. That's yeah, we that, that okay. URL also it will connect back on whether it is quality system or production system. Yeah, yeah. 
okay i will show you the uh, connections available we have an option yeah yeah and second thing is in what are the scenarios most probably we can create a trs okay uh trr okay. you mean transport request transport request yeah yeah okay upper in fact we have a very different concept it, unlike our regular r3 system where we create the tr number and transport from development to quality to production we have okay. this export import concept okay so it's very easy far more easy compared to the conventional transport what we do is we create uh, the all these objects okay what we have to transport is these objects like models and stories okay so what we do is we for example a model and story will export from the source system okay then the scc will convert it to a file a xml like file it's called .tgc file extension .tgc it will convert to a, it, 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 it's like a notepad file Uh, scc will convert it to .tgc file then we log into the target system and import import it back say we have an option to import it so we import this .tgc file and it will convert it again back to model and story okay so the transport is far more simple compared to our regular uh, tr method means file also we can save in tr now in source no, no, we can there is save no tr file. number there is no concept of tr at all all we do is all we do is we'll convert the object whatever object we had to transport we'll convert it to uh, a dot tgc file or i think if i click here, i don't know whether it will work here on the transfer it doesn't work on trial system but there is no tr number created okay in r3 it's all it's mainly about the numbers right tr numbers yeah. there is no number created what what it creates is a dot tgc file it's like a notepad file Okay, okay. We have to name the file and then we have to ex import it back from the target system. But but the same link can we create this uh, uh, TRs? Yeah, yeah, possible. We can do using this link only. This is it's not working now because it's a trial system. Okay, okay. On a project system, we'll have this option to export and import. Okay. Okay. It's far more simple. Okay. So uh, now that you asked about connection, let me show the uh, back end. I can discard this for now. Uh, i can show the back end systems possible where uh, we go to connection then plus see all these are the back end systems from where we can uh, pick that up so there are two type of connections like i told there is a live and acquired or import so under so most of the time we'll be doing this acquired connection or import connection okay. so we have all these systems possible this is uh, sap people will definitely know cloud for customer is a crm system cloud for customer analytics is an analytic conquer is a travel solution field glass i think i'm not sure it's a some specific solution sap hana is a native hana modeling system ibp is a planning system s4 hana i we, we all know it's a, a platform s4 platform success factors is an hr solution work for analytics even google if we can pick data even from google drive not necessarily an sap backend so all these systems we can have as a backend connection in term when it's an import connection okay and but live connection has some some restrictions so it's mainly about these only these systems are possible on a bw or a data sphere or a sap hana is a native hana modeling system okay so and then here it shows the categories okay all these categories of systems the cloud and on premise So we select cloud only cloud systems we show here. Is this fine, Berkus? Aparo, is it okay? Yeah, it's okay, um, Brijesh. Okay, I think. Thank okay, you. Then, because yeah. I have, I have one question here. Uh, what the difference between uh, SSC and SSC planning? No, SSC is a platform, okay, which has BI planning, predictive analytics. And the application designer. There are four main components. So SAC planning okay. is within SAC. But so we can, six, yeah. We so can use all four no. together at a time. Yeah, yeah. It's all the all four are within the same system. So planning, we create a planning object by. We can create a planning model. We can create a planning story. Everything is here. See, all these are planning objects. There is only one login. Login and okay. system is only one. Just that we have different Maybe. features. Oh, okay. So maybe have some uh, basic differences between all four together. 
any micro label difference about the functionality sac bi we and we are analyzing a uh, business data or ag we call it actual data the business has already happened we are, we are analyzing the data generated by the business it's a historical data already it's done the business is done data is generated we are analyzing it that is the what that, that is the purpose of the sac bi system in planning we are kind of we have in planning functionality we are trying to plan for the future for a for, for an organization they can have a sales planning they can have hr planning then revenue planning then profit and loss all these business operations or business areas they can plan ahead for a period of maybe one year three year five year even 10 years so that that we can do using this planning planning system or planning features all these are planning features so there are two it's a different job skill altogether from a, from a job seeker's point of view sac bi is a skill sac planning is a different skill and uh, and rest of the two yeah uh, other one is this one third one is predictive scenarios predictive analytics which has all these data science uh, ai and uh, this machine learning concepts we can there are, so again there are smart assist other features like smart assist so sac we can uh, we can create predictive scenarios using sac that's a again a different skill which is not yet there in market i would say i don't know when whether anyone is hiring for predictive but bi and planning definitely there are a lot of hiring happening even today okay so for your uh, so first thing we should do is to learn bi okay. you will definitely get interviews that's all i can say okay is that fine uh, uh regarding the all four sub modules how it is linked with uh, this uh, main module no no all all those are small features the, for example digital boardroom okay it's a different component okay uh, and it's not very complex it's a, you can learn in one hour okay. digital boardroom is nothing but a uh, like it's like a hardware and software it's like a screen like we have this in boardroom meetings we use these powerpoint presentations like typically what we, they use today is powerpoint presentation but with sac front end they can have a screen touch enable screen and there is all this company top management can do a presentation so we can configure the back end here this is skill i think it's somewhere here so me here there is a feature called digital boardroom and whatever story we create we can enable it for digital boardroom we can uh, present the same story in a digital in a in a boardroom meeting okay. so we can't really call it a skill it's just a feature so it's just a small feature Okay. Um, please, uh, small clarification. Yeah. Suppose if you are doing any uh, what if analysis in model, mm -hmm. directly user can do that one, or uh, we have to do that uh, what if analysis that uh, calculation yeah, yeah. all we need to okay. provide to user. Yeah, I think you are referring to self service. Okay, the, they call it self service. So whatever story or dash uh, dashboard we create, uh, users has lot of. lot of freedom they are not just looking at the dashboard and gaining insight they can do a lot of filtering other adjustments uh, a lot of things they they have a lot of freedom okay to create what if scenarios in bi and in planning there is a separate tool to do what if scenario it's called uh, value driver tree uh, they can simulate all these business scenarios and uh, get the desired results so there is a separate widget or a tool to do uh what if scenarios but otherwise uh, in bi stories users as uh, they have lot of freedom okay and uh, not that we are to we are developing something and users are looking at not like that they they can do i don't know how what percentage maybe around 30 percentage of what we do users can also do okay okay thanks brijesh yeah. fine okay uh okay that i think let's go back to our story i wanted to create one complete cycle before we wind up for the day so we go to the file we create story we select responsive page create it in askers to pick the data okay 
I think we need to whatever what we are creating right now is a chart. So we have a selected chart. It's asking where to pick the data from. So I selected the model which we created. OK, uh, the most important thing is we have to uh, add the dimensions and measure. So it's a, it's a chart. We all might have seen all these different chart types. Many of you might have seen bar column, line chart, numeric point, pie chart, donut chart. So let's select a bar column chart now. Let's select bar column chart. Let's make it vertical. Looks better. So um, let's add. So we need to add uh, meshes and dimensions. Okay. So accounts. So we click on add account. We account and meshes both refer to same. Both have same meaning. Okay. So let's add few meshes. Meshes. So. So I'm adding three meshes. And I need to add dimension as well. I created a year month column you might remember. Year month which is in date format. It, it has a hierarchy. So that's why I created this as a date. I'll switch off this for now. Let me expand this. OK, then I can do a little bit styling by going. There is a there are two sections here. OK, in this configuration It's called a designer or a designer window has three two sections. One is builder. Other is styling. OK, so we can go to styling and. We can create a. Uh, border, let's give a border all border. Give a line width of two. Corner radius, let's say of six. So we are in this one. We are in edit mode. There are three places where we do the settings. One is this top bar. Okay. Second is this builder panel, which has builder and styling. Sorry, uh, designer panel, which has builder and styling. And the third place is this. We call it action bar. When once we click on the top right part of the widget we get these three dots we select them and we have all these features okay it's more of a settings or a configuration which we'll go in detail later but let's for now uh, what we have is we selected three meshes okay uh, plan total revenue sorry actual total revenue plan total revenue and forecast total revenue let me change it to millions that is more more readable It's an option to number format. We select million. Now we can compare it. It's easy to compare. So there are three things, uh, 351 million, etc. So now with uh, there is a feature called drill down. Uh, see, if we go here. Okay, since I selected year month as a date column, the hierarchy uh, has come. So we are in level one now. So let's go to level three. Level one means it's all time. Okay. So we have selected year month. So complete that for the whole, whole year. So if we go to level three, it will show a quarterly split. Okay. So this is 2020 data contains 2021 year data 2021 and three quarter data. That's what what's what we have. So it has given a quarterly split, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. So that's called hierarchy. So if you go to drill and we can go to next level, it will give a monthly split. Both all year, quarter and month. Okay. So this is a basic chart. You can see you can save this. This is a story, okay. <laughs> and technically, we can call this a story, okay, because a story usually will have many widgets like this, but even a one widget we can call story. This is in page one, okay. So now, uh, what we need to do is we need to share this story with the user. So we have we are in edit mode now, so we can go to view mode. Okay. 
Okay, we are in view mode now, and we have an option to go to top, come top left. So we can either export it as a PDF file. When if the user doesn't have a system access, we can export the story using a PDF file. Otherwise, most of the times we use this feature, share. Okay, we can share this link. What it does is it will share this link with the user. User should have access. They can have a look at the story. Okay, then there is other there are other options called published catalog which we don't use often. This is very important thing: schedule publication. Whenever we are making the, uh, when we keep making changes in the backend, we need to use select this option so that uh, we don't have to share the story every time we change, make a change. We don't have to share this share it to the user. So it's a one-time share, but the user will keep getting updates. Whatever changes we make, the user will be getting the updates. Okay. So that's where it is. So okay. In fact, we have completed the com we have done the complete cycle today. So this is the very high level of what we do in SAC. Okay. We we what we have done is we have picked up data, created model, and created a story. Okay. Uh, I'm hoping all of you got the concept. But we have done only one chart. We can do other items like tables, etc., which I don't think um, which many of you will already know. What is a table? We whenever we have few measures, only few measures to present. We have presented only three measures here. We can go. We can use a chart, and whenever uh, whenever we have a, a lot of Meshes or dimensions to uh, present, we can go for a table. So, more 90 percentage of the time, we'll be using either a chart or a table in our story. Okay, so yeah, that's where I think I've done the complete cycle. So, again, anyone has questions? Uh, not from my end, Rajesh. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, that's all we need for demo. Okay, so typically I done one one hour within one hour we are present. We are kind of uh, finished one cycle. Okay, so once you all join, we will be going in detail. This is essay. Whatever we have done today is SAC BI. That is, we have analyzed sales data, which has already happened. The data is already generated in the system. So we picked it from Excel. So we are just, we are just analyzing it. Okay, if we want to go there again. So it shows against each month, for example, 2021 quarter one Jan, uh, actual total revenue is 45.64 million. Plan total revenue is 44 million. So likewise, the user will get a, it's far much, much better than Excel sheet, right? Like a table format, all the, all these old reporting tools used to be, it will show in a table format, but with Power BI and this SAC, uh, this is, uh, much easier to understand with colors and charts, etc. It's much better report, and they have the user can uh, they can set filters, etc. There are a lot of things user can do, which we will cover once you all uh, start the classes. Okay, so this is in a nutshell uh, what SAC can do. Okay, so.